Good morning and welcome to Digital Church and to this Connect Spot this morning. Uh, firstly, can I say thank you to Glynis for what was a beautiful prayer time. So lovely to see uh, what you and your family have been up to over this time and just to hear the thoughts and reflections uh, of your lockdown period. And it's a lovely encouragement to go off the back of what uh, Joy's been asking for over the last couple of weeks to share some stories of what you've been doing, the ways that you've been reaching out, spending time with your family, spending time digitally, catching up with friends. Uh, so I'll just repeat that encouragement to you that if you do have uh, photographs and stories to share, please send them through to any of the digital church team that you see on the screen leading the service each week so that we can share them with the rest of our church family. Now you'll notice that uh, I'm on my own this morning. Unfortunately, I'm just feeling a little under the weather, so prayers for her would be appreciated. Now for Connect today, uh, we're going to continue the virtual tour of the living rooms of our church family uh, by going live to Castleford to have a chat with Pauline Burley. So Pauline, good morning. Are you there? And can you hear me? Um, yes, good morning. I can. And uh, good morning, everybody. And welcome, not to my living room, but my dining room. To the dining room instead of the living room. Well, it's just as yeah. lovely. Thanks for joining us, Pauline. Are you doing well this morning? Are you OK? I'm fine, thank you. Nervous, but fine. No reason to be nervous. You're an absolute pro at this from all of your many years of standing and doing the announcements. I'm sure it'll be no different to that. Uh, it'd be interesting to start, Pauline, just to know how you've been spending your time recently. We know that if church was open, you'd be there most days, busy in the coffee shop, busy running Castle Kids, doing all of your secretarial duties that you do so well for us. Uh, so what have you been doing? And in particular, maybe what new things have you been doing as well? Um, well, when uh, lockdown happened, it sort of knocked the bottom out of my world because, um, as you say, most days I was at the army, at the hall, and mm -hmm. so I thought, I'm here. And um, I, I just, and I'm, I'm, I was always getting told off for running everywhere, uh, but that's how I did things. I ran from here to there and back again. And, um, and so here I was, and I thought, I'd look at things and I would shrug my shoulders and say, well, it can wait till tomorrow. You know, why Why do it today? And I sort of got rather lazy and very slow. And I thought, well, this is no good. I'm going to have to do something with myself. And uh, a few months ago, well, it would probably be about a year ago now, I was listening to an, um, an article on the radio and it was someone discussing a book which had a rather odd title and it was um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying and it was written by a lady called Marie Kondo and I, I bought it at the time but never opened it and so I'm looking at all this turmoil around me and I thought to myself right I'm going to have to do something where's the book so I got the book and I got as page as far as page 46 and I was hooked and um, I'm still at page 46 I uh, have not got any further than that but I have been tidying and um, she said um, the first thing you have to do is you have to throw out well I had much to throw out because I'm a hoarder and I had quite a lot of stuff that Graham had hoarded because Graham was one of these things that people that um, decided that things uh, well they were antique and um, they would be they could become valuable so uh, it didn't sort of take on board that um, if you had like um, one of those pot spaniels with a flat back, you sat on the half, right? One would probably be worth about five pounds. But if you had two, it'd be like 500 pounds. But we were like that. We had all odd single things and things. Sure. So I'd started with the loft and the, ga the garage and then... Um, I really started enjoying this and then I decided with the help of a friend to have a makeover um, that's taking a little longer than I thought because I keep adding adding things to it I'm afraid and um, which all takes um, time but I'm, I'm really I'm feeling so much better in myself I mm. really I really am and I'm be I hope my dog barking is not disturbing no it's fine um, it's okay. um uh, so I really feel much better in myself and um, I believe there's a mag magazine called House Beautiful well they can come and take pictures here when it's finished because that's what it's going to be and hopefully when I've got, I've got a little bit more clearing out to do but hopefully when it's done the only um, antique here will be me. <laughs> 
<laughs> now it's interesting because a book uh, about tidying doesn't immediately appeal to me uh, no. but, but actually I've seen uh, Marie Kondo on Netflix I think people might have seen her tv series uh, and it's interesting you talking about finding things to do because I think one of the phrases she uses is finding things that spark joy and in this mm -hmm. time it taught you you know you're talking about reflecting on maybe I need to take more time to rest. Actually, maybe I'm resting too much and I'm doing too much procrastinating. Uh, so it's good to hear actually that you have found something that sparks a little bit of joy, even if it's tidying, which uh, wouldn't be my idea of it. Um, um, I would like to say that uh, someone did say that it was on Netflix. So um, I, uh, I, I went and had a look at it. And if there's anybody watching this who um, hasn't uh, seen it before please may i say that my house before i started looked nothing at all like any of them my my job hasn't been quite that bad <laughs> some quite extreme examples absolutely yeah. well i can testify yeah. to my sock drawer and tie drawer being um beautiful examples of how marie Kondo would have things organized so i, I can agree with you there pauline um yeah. it'd be interesting to know what you've missed about not being at the hall and being in fellowship at castleford after so long away uh, and uh, perhaps most interesting, what new ways have you found to connect with people around you? Well, I've um, I've, I've obviously missed um, Sunday worship, but then again, um, I'm not missing out because I I'm sat here on my own, but. On a Sunday, I know that the Holy Spirit's with me. I mean, I'm singing away with the tears running down my cheeks. And I know that I'm not on my own because I know that there's all our church family and beyond Absolutely. watching. So, so okay, I'm not sat next to somebody. I can't turn around and speak to somebody vocally, but I can do it on, on the keyboard. And... Uh, I just love sharing in that way. I'm not on my own. I'm I'm a, I'm with my church family at this right at this moment in time. Yeah, um, what else have I missed? I've missed band practice. I'm the worst player they've got, but I love the fellowship um, that I have with them. Mm -hmm. It's it's really something very special, and um, I've told them that quite often. I've um, I'm been on the throes of, of resigning because I think it's about time I did, did. but I know that I would miss the, the camaraderie that we have um, at practice. Yeah. Um, I've missed I've missed my office work um, because uh, I thought when I was asked would I, I do it, I thought long and hard about it because um, of, of my age thing, you know, and I have very senior moments and things will you know, go in there and, and come out here, but won't register as it passes through. Um, I think of all those things, um, but it, I felt that it was something God wanted me to do, and it, it, it does keep me focused. And it was, um, apart from my dogs having to get up and take them out, it's, it was something to get me up and, and going, going. So um, I have missed... I have missed going there, but I do do my work still here, so that's not a problem. Yeah. Um, uh, um, what was the other bit? Well, what do I do to keep in touch with people? Well, and in new ways so, in particular, yeah. Um, well, I spend more time on, on social media, and um, I have been um, going around with the papers. I had a paper round when I was 13, and um, I've got one now at 17. And um, so... You know, so I have enjoyed that, although it did get me into trouble, right? Because I think it was like about four weeks into the big lockdown. And I thought, right, I can go out with these papers and I can do um, what Simon does when he brings my shopping. He puts it on the doorstep and he rings the bell and then he travels back a bit and has a long distance conversation. Yeah. So I thought, right, I can do that. So I went off with the papers. And um, I'd got gloves on and everything. And um, I went to one lady's house and she wasn't in, so I pushed them through the letterbox. And um, later that day, it was put on. I don't know who's delivered my papers, but thank you so very much. Um, it's m much appreciated. And then <clears throat> someone who will remain nameless, but does like to keep everybody straight, put up two words, Pauline Burles. 
And the next thing I had Simon on the phone giving me trouble and he threatened me with his big brother and <laughs> I don't know what else. So social media does can, can get you into a bit of bother. But um I, I, I'm fine and I, I keep going and um I see people and I've got lovely neighbours um mm. who look after me and they even walked the dog at one point. Um yeah. and so it was it was good. Great. If just for people who are watching, if you do have any words of encouragement to share with Pauline, I'd encourage you to do that. This one from Catherine says, uh, Pauline, you are wonderful. Thank you for being so kind hearted, helpful, supportive and encouraging. We love you. And that is a, a sentiment from the whole call, Pauline. Uh, so glad you have slowed down a little. John Goodrich, uh, on reflection of band fellowship, said that you shared a prayer with him when he was down and he was really grateful for that. Uh, and Luke also saying thank you for all that you've done uh, and continue to do as, as our car secretary. Uh, your personality lights up many an occasion and it wouldn't be Casper without you. So they're uh, glad to hear that you're slowing down a little bit, but still keeping Simon on his toes. And that's from Luke and Beth. Uh, so thank you for those comments, folks. If there are any more to come, please do share them. Um, Pauline, is there a, a piece of scripture uh, and or a song that you'd like to share with us this morning? Um, yes, there's lots of scripture, um, especially when you think about these times. Um, I quite often use um, Psalms for my prayers time or even my songbook because I just love some of the words and the thoughts in in the songbook um but the the my favorite bible verse has to be from um Isaiah 43 and it mm. says um fear not for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by thy name you are mine and the thought that you know my father God didn't shout hey you Oh, you know, funny woman, come over here. You know, he, he called me by my name. If I've got one regret, it's because it took me 35 years to hear his call. Um, and But I believe that the following 35 years plus, I've been absolutely marvellous. Mm. I've had my up times, my down times. But then when you go further into that reading, it says that... Um, even though I have to walk through waters or have to go through a river, the water won't overflow um, me. And if I was to have to go through fire, um, I won't be burnt. And the reason for all this is because he loves me and I'm precious in his sight. Yeah. And I think um, as well as those, the, the kind of trials I think in, you can include in that even pandemic walking through with through pandemic you know i'm his and and that's i know where to put my trust and going along those lines um one of my favorite songs when um i sang in the songsters um was um uh, by his hand yeah. and I, i'd like to read uh, read a couple of verses if that's all right sure, and that's you. um he leads me oh blessed thought O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught, where whate'er I do, where'er I be, it's still God's hand that leadeth me. I'll have to pick it up, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then it says, um, sometimes me me mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes when Eden's flowers bloom, is by water still or troubled sea, still tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I will be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Mm. And I think of that that song quite often. I also um, think of my life as a, a child. And, and I'm sure many of you have seen and many of you will have experienced walking along with a, with a little child and they want to let go of your hand and they want to run on and explore or they want to lag behind because they've seen something and I know that on occasions um, I've let go of my father's hand and um, run on in, in front or lag behind um, and those I can reflect on have not been the greatest days but the best days are when I, I'm being guided by his hand and following him. Yeah thank you Pauline such a lovely uh paired reflection with that scripture and the song that through this time knowing that his his hand um is guiding us is holding ours um 
is, is a lovely thought. And just a few extra comments. God bless you, Pauline, that we love you from David, uh, that Jennifer, Helena and Mark um, are also joined hearing from you this morning. And this last one from Simon, good to hear from you this morning, mum. Thanks for all that you do for our church. And it's good to hear from the dogs, uh, Molly and Charlie as well. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing all of that. It's really important for us as a fellowship to know, Pauline, how can we pray for you this morning? Uh, what's going on that we can be uh, on our knees for on your behalf? Well, um, for me personally, uh, not so much, but I would like you to share with the burden that I have. Um, I would like everybody to play, pray uh, for our digital church. Uh, that's not a burden, but um, I believe it is reaching so many people. Mm. And I believe there are people out there who are tuning into this and as yet have not um, got that relationship with Jesus. They haven't got that relationship. They don't know him as friend and saviour. And I would like us all to pray for those people or anyone else that you know uh, near you. Because there are people at this time who um, are suffering for many reasons. It might be because they are themselves not well, not just through COVID, but, you know, sort of quite ill with other things. There are people who have lost someone and don't know where to find comfort. They don't know where to find that comfort. They don't know where to pin their hope. And there are other people probably in quite ugly and dark places. And I feel that this is what... Um, why, why we have digital church because we are reaching more people than than what what we normally do that come through our our doors um and i would i just ask that you would pray for those and i would also ask you to pray for people who at this time um because we're not meeting as a as a as a church body like we are normally perhaps um the flames um, dimmed a little you know they haven't been able to take to um, online church I don't know but I would pray that maybe they might be led back into into this fellowship yes yeah. it's 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 totally different but it's still our fellowship it's our church and it's where we worship even if you're in your dining room your sitting room sat on the side of your bed in your jammies it doesn't matter it's our fellowship and we all belong yeah. to it amazing thank you paul and there's there's a a call to you praying people uh to get on your knees and pray for our, our church community uh the ones that we know because we're used to seeing their faces in the hall uh, and those that are unseen and unknown to us uh, especially those who may be struggling at, at this time in particular Pauline, I'm so grateful uh, for your time this morning. I've been asked to remind you that you're uh, cooking a roast for the officers to make sure it gets on in time. Um, mm -hmm. But just to thank you for, for all that you do and continue to do for the car um, and just we'll pray that our blessings are over you uh, over these coming weeks. So thank you for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure and I'll now go and put the oven on. Thank you. Uh, we're going to hand off uh, to watch a very excited Ignite. I'm certainly excited because I, I think there's a bit of a Toy Story theme, which is one of my favourites. Uh, so here's handing over to the Ignite Kids Church. Thanks, Pauline. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.